So in this week's gospel, we hear what happens after the events that we heard about last week. Jesus is still in Capernaum, this small town near the Lake of Galilee, and he's been preaching at the synagogue on the Sabbath, and then he's invited to come over to Peter's house, and immediately they tell her about uh, his mother-in-law, who is sick, has a fever, and is unable to, to be there, to mingle. And it's, it's a wonderful story where, uh, I think it's wonderful and it touches me because it's so recognizable, it's so relatable. We've all had these situations where, you know, our mother was sick or we were sick ourselves and you, you would like to be with the rest of the family but you're in bed and you're feeling miserable. And then it's so, it's so wonderful if someone visits you and helps you or when the doctor cures you. And that, that's exactly what we see happening. Jesus goes to her and takes her by the hand and helps her to rise. And then she immediately goes on healthy again to serve them. This is not just a random, relatable story. There's always a reason why the evangelists write down these little moments. Jesus has done things that are so much more spectacular. Someone who couldn't walk, he you know, just uh, heals a, a, someone who's paralyzed or someone who's completely blind for most of his life, all of a sudden can see. So why? In this gospel, do we still hear about this small story? It's just a fever, you know? It's nothing too serious. Well, there is a very important reason. First of all, keep in mind, and I'll get back to it, that this is one of the first miracles that Jesus does. This happens at the start of its ministry. So when you do something at the start, it's also to indicate, this is my mission. It's like a program, so remember that. But then there's much more to this seemingly small event. And in order to understand a little bit more what's truly going on, let me go and step into the world that some of you are very familiar with as well, and that's the world of Star Wars. Uh, you may have seen the third sequel, um, made by J.J. Abrams called The Rise of Skywalker. And, the, and these movies tell the story of two antagonists. On the one hand, you've got Rey, who is definitely a very good person, this young girl who has incredible powers, and at the same time, she's always trying to help others with those powers. On the other side, you've got Kylo Ren, clothed in black, wearing a mask to hide his true face. He, is, he has also incredible powers, but uses them to destroy, to kill, to impose himself, to rule. Rey and Kylo. When the movie picks up in the third movie, in The Rise of Skywalker, at one point, Ray is in a cave and she's accompanied by her friends. And while they are trying to get out of that cave, they're suddenly blocked by an enormous monster. It's a very weird scene. There's this huge snake, like an extraterrestrial snake, uh, almost looks like a dragon. And the snake is extremely agitated, ready to attack. And the first impulse of the group is, we need to shoot it, we need to kill it, it's gonna kill us. Everyone reacts like that, except for Ray. Ray approaches the snake and discovers that the snake is wounded. The snake has a huge gap in his side and it's the hurt of that wound that has caused all this agitation. The snake is afraid, tries to defend himself, is enraged by the pain that it feels. 
And Ray reaches out for the snake and uses the force, this, this extraordinary power that is very mysterious in the Star Wars movies, this, this force streams through her and touches the wound of the snake and the snake is healed. And the result is the snake calms down and lets them go free. When I first saw this movie at the premiere, this was one of the scenes that really bothered me. It felt gratuitous, like it's just another monster and why a space snake? This is, this is a bit weird and, and a bit dumb. I mean, it, it holds up the story. It, 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 it doesn't fit with the Star Wars stories that we are familiar with. So I didn't understand it. However, as is often the case in, our, in the story of our lives, understanding sometimes comes much later than the actual events. And a little bit later in the movie, Rey finally is confronted with her nemesis, with Kylo Ren. They're fighting, there is this violent confrontation, both use their lightsabers and in the middle of a storm where huge waves are crashing all around them, symbolizing also their inner storm, they fight and it's a fight of life and death. And they both fight for a different reason. Rey fights because she knows that Kylo Ren is sick. He is deeply affected by the dark side of the Force that has corrupted his soul and that threatens to overpower him forever. She fights to save him. Kylo Ren, on the other hand, fights to defend himself. He has built up this wall around his heart because he's been so hurt in the past. And anyone who dares to approach him, he counters with aggression, very similar to the snake who had this wound in its side. Remember in The Force Awakens that Kylo Ren too is wounded and has a wound in his side. I, as a theologian, think of Jesus on the cross with a wound in his side. So it's the pain and the fear that makes him so aggressive. He fights because he thinks it's the only way to survive. But then this confrontation, confrontation takes a weird turn. Ray, instead of saving Kylo, kills him and he is gasping for breath in her arms and at that point we start to understand why the movie first told the story with the snake because at that moment Ray reaches out with her hand summons the force and heals Kylo Ren heals the wound and he is brought back to life and in a way symbolically this is in the heart of the movie it's right in the middle even time wise why is this the center of the story because it's fundamental what happens here kylo ren the evil possessed person has died at the hands of ray but it's the same Ray who resurrects who he truly was, Ben, Ben Solo, Ben, the son of Leia Skywalker. And it's that new person saved from everything that made him sick and was killing him. It's this new person that rises. That is why the movie is called The Rise of Skywalker, he is a son of Leia Skywalker, the rise of Skywalker. But even at that moment, we don't fully grasp why this is happening. And it's only at the end that we fully grasp the width 
and the height and the depth of these events. Because at the end of the story, the situation is turned upside down. At the very last part of the movie, Ray faces the ultimate evil, the emperor. And he seems to be this untamable source of evil that blasts out of him in the shape of lightning and almost kills her. And when she is laying there after having defeated the emperor but mortally wounded, Ben approaches and holds her in his arms. And when she closes her eyes and breathes her last breath and dies, he returns what she gave him. He gives his own life force to bring her back from the dead. She lives even though he dies. And then she becomes ultimately the new Skywalker that rises. This, this story is full of meaning, but it reveals us also something, or it can help us explain the gospel that we just heard. You know, why do we hear this story of the, the, the mother-in-law of Peter being healed from just a fever? Because it's programmatic. Jesus here reveals for the first time that he is there to heal. And who sees Jesus sees the Father. This gospel is a counterpoint to the first reading that Marijke has, has uh, read, the story of Job in the Old Testament. Job is always depressed, frustrated by everything that happens to him. And it gets worse and worse. And his reaction is always, I am so miserable. God hates me. He hates me. He doesn't love me. And in the gospel, we get an answer to that conundrum, to that frustration of Job. When Jesus shows, I'm not here to condemn you. God doesn't hate you. God wants you to live. That's why he takes this sick woman by the hand and helps her rise up. It is what he's going to do for the rest of his life. He is a doctor who wants us to rise. And then there is a small detail in the way this story is written that is extremely important. Why does he heal her? The story tells us that she immediately, immediately serves them. And it's mentioned on purpose. She was healed so that she can follow Jesus. She becomes someone, a disciple of Jesus, and Jesus came to serve. She is now following him by serving. Let's translate this to our own lives. Many of us have been sick. Maybe you are sick right now, and that's why you can't go to church. Many of our friends, relatives are sick. And when I, when I get sick, it's, I'm always frustrated. I hate it. I can't do anything. I feel miserable. And usually at first, I'm very much like Job. I'm complaining. It's like, why is this happening? And how did it, how did I get sick? When I got COVID, the first question that I asked myself was like, who infected me? <laughs> Where did this happen? When am I going to be better again? The doctor asked me questions. So what are your symptoms? And when did they start? And how do you feel? My friends called me up also with questions. You know, how can we help? What do you need? Groceries, let us get you food and whatnot. But all these questions were not the most important. The one question that I forgot to ask is why? Why did I get sick? It's not the same question as how did I get sick? And ultimately also, 
something we often forget. Why did I get better? The question of why is a question of faith. A doctor can tell us what and when and how. But we can ask ourselves and we can ask God in our prayers, why? And if we ask that with an open heart instead of an accusing heart, like Job is always like, why, why me, why? It's so frustrating. But if we ask God, why, tell me, what is the meaning? What do you want to teach me? We may discover that in fact, what seems to be a negative, getting sick, feeling miserable, may actually in God's plan ultimately be something positive because it teaches us something very important. Why do we get sick? Why did Peter's mother-in-law get sick? I think so that Jesus could reveal who he truly was, a doctor, a healer, a savior. And why did she get better? So she could become a disciple, so she could help and serve just like Jesus was able to help and serve. Why is this event even in the gospel? Because it, it, it is connected to what happens at the very end of the story. When Jesus dies on the cross, it is a moment where we have to remember this scene. And we have to remember that God's power can heal sickness and maybe can even save us from death. That is how strong God is. He does not want his son to die. He wants his son to live. And just like Peter's mother-in-law, Jesus too, rises from the dead because he needs to live to serve. He wants to live to serve and to heal, not just in his time 2,000 years ago, but now, today, and tomorrow, in this corona crisis, he is here, living and well, in our midst, to heal and to serve. And if we are alive at this moment, if we survive our sickness, maybe we should ask ourselves if that is an invitation to follow, to serve in his footsteps. Amen.